Z-Speed back with a Motordyne Art Pipe install. So let's get started. First thing you really want to do is coat, coat everything with some PB Blaster. Right there is the U-Brace uh, bolt to the catalytic converter. Coat that, coat your oxygen sensor nut right there. That's going to be baked in there. So really coat that well. Um, here is your catalytic converter to Y-Pipe, two, two bolts and nuts. Coat that heavily and make sure that that just gets nice and wet and then here's your flex pipe right here to your y-pipe we're going over to the other side and you can see <clears throat> the three spline gasket right there uh, on the other side of the uh, catalytic converter make sure you coat that down those are very rusty and that three spline gasket that comes into play later i'll sh talk to you about that there is the header to the catalytic converter three bolts up there um, spray the whole thing down and just let it sit for at least 30 minutes. If you do not spray those down, you're likely to strip out some bolts, so I don't recommend that. You got four bolts holding up the U-brace right here, and uh, those are pretty easy, easy to come out. Uh, there's no usually no rust on those because they're not exposed to any type of major heat. So that pops out. And there's a couple gaskets, uh, rubber gaskets, you might want to hit with some Armor All 303 lubricant to let them soak in and get a little more supple. Here we've unplugged the oxygen sensor. It's right here with a, a flathead screwdriver. You can see the right and left oxygen sensor unplugged. I don't have the proper socket to take those out, so I can you can take those out after you remove the cats. It's not a big deal if you have the socket. Uh, you can go ahead and remove them before or after you've disconnected them. I had to actually bend the brace down right here to get a better angle. You see the braces that are bent down right there to get a better angle with the flathead screwdriver to unhook the sensors. Not a big deal. You can bend those brackets back and uh, to correct figuration once you're um, disconnected. Right up here is the uh, three bolts. Uh, you. It's gonna be easier to go through the engine bay to get the top bolt, but it is doable uh, with a ratchet and extended socket to get all three from underneath. I actually did it. I did all three bolts from underneath, much easier on the passenger side than the um, driver side. The driver side has a steering column that interferes uh, with your ratchet and you can really literally only get one click at a time on the driver side, but it is doable from underneath. I did it myself. But when you go to uh, reattach it, uh, bolt it down, you're not gonna be able to get torque specs unless you come through the top of the engine bay with a, probably like a two foot extension. So here you can see that we're, uh, we've got the U-brace out of the way and we're ready to um, take the catalytic converter out. We've already moved the nuts from the header to the catalytic converter. And we also removed the nuts from the catalytic converter to the Y-pipe. So now I've actually got a jack, and I don't show you that part, but underneath the Y-pipe, uh, at the center of the Y-pipe, I've got a jack supporting that up because we're going to use that flex pipe right there and we're going to uh, flex it and pull it off of those two bolts so that we can free the Y-pipe from the catalytic converter. And once we're able to do that, we're then able to uh, remove the catalytic converter from the manifold. But you have to pull that out of the way first to, and get the tension off of the catalytic converter before you can do so. Okay, this is a view of the driver's side catalytic converter to header. And I'm gonna show you I got my ratchet with an uh, extended socket on there. It's definitely difficult, and I'm gonna recommend that you do go in through the top of the engine bay. You're gonna have to remove the intake, uh, the intake filter to get it out of your way and use an extension. But I was able to do it, and I'm gonna show you. Uh, there it is, there's a good clear picture. You can see the rack and pinion steering right there is very close to that upper bolt or nut up, up on top of the manifold and it's hard to get a ratchet in there, but you can do it. I'm going to actually show you with one hand here, I'm gonna slip that in and you really have to go between the rack and steering and the header 
and slide your ratchet in there. It's, it's tricky. It really, um, you're probably better off going to the top, but if you want to try it like I did, and it will break loose as well with the PB blaster. You can get in there and click it one click at a time and loosen it up. Uh, once you get the cats both out, here are here's the Y pipe, and uh, you can see there's the bolt that has to be cut off. That bolt, if not cut off, uh, with uh, either a hacksaw or I'm using a little rotary blade here, that will puncture your Art tube resonance pipe. Um, if you hit a big enough bump, that will just pop a hole right through it. So you don't want anything damaging your motor dyne art pipes if you spend all that money on it. So you're gonna use a Dremel or a hacksaw or hacksaw blade with your hand if you, if you had to, or a small little saw to get in there and trim those bolts flush with that nut right there. I'm not gonna show you. I'll show you the after effect because of the sparks. But here it is, that's what it should look like. And I hit a little, uh, took a little sandpaper just to clean it up after I cut them off. And uh, those will no longer cause you any problems. There you go, that's probably a better way to cut it. Leave a little bit of thread at the end. Cut the other one just a little close. But that's about perfect right there. So now you're ready to put your art pipes in. But before we can put the art pipes in, we do have to transfer the oxygen sensors from the catalytic converter to the O2 bungs in the art pipes. So I did not have the appropriate uh, socket for the O2 sensor removal. So I used the crescent wrench and the rubber mallet trick, which basically is uh, just tapping it to pop it loose. And it doesn't take a lot of force, but it's hard to do just by hand. So the rubber mallet might come in handy if you're having difficulty breaking it loose by hand. Once you break it loose, it comes, comes out pretty easily. After you remove those, you definitely want to wipe the uh, end of the uh, sensor down. You could use Windex and a clean paper towel or a little bit of carburetor cleaner on the end just to get any carbon buildup that might have accumulated over the years. And it might give you a better reading. Um, the 350Z probe, uh, there's a blue one for the passenger side and the green one is um, for the driver side. It may vary with the year, but for the 2004, that's the color scheme. They are pretty uh, hefty, that's like 12.5 pounds a piece. So it's a combined weight of 25 pounds. This O2 sensor as well was a little, was still stuck even with the PB blaster. So I'm gonna use the same trick by um, tapping it with the rubber mallet. And you just gotta get a good angle on it. And uh, just a couple taps should do it. Don't be, don't get too rough with it. You definitely do not want to damage the O2 sensors because they're quite expensive. And you want to take, uh, treat those with kid gloves. So once you get them out and clean them up, you're going to be ready to transfer those to the uh, O2 bone and the art pipes. This one's sh coming out pretty easily now, now that I've broken it loose. Uh, there's a little bit of carbon buildup on that. I, I don't know if you can see that, but just to slide them out. And you can see the old gasket, the three splined gasket. Here are the um, sensors installed. I didn't show that pretty. It's pretty obvious. Just screw them in and tighten them. Don't go, get crazy with it, but uh, tighten them up pretty tight. And if you have anti seize, uh, it would be a good idea to put a little bit of anti seize on the sensor. You don't have to, but um, they tend to get pretty hot. So this is uh, what it should look, look like after you're all done. Now I'm going to show you 
the uh, Motordyne gaskets. And um, to be honest, I ended up using um, an aftermarket gasket in conjunction with this Motordyne gasket right here. And I went to uh, AutoZone and picked up another gasket because they give you a donut that you're supposed to slip in between uh, the gasket and the uh, Y pipe. And honestly, I had difficulty getting that O ring to slide in and stay put. It tended to drift to one end or the other, uh, one side or another, and I could never get a good perfect seal. Um, I think the theory is that it's supposed to seat right there in the center and then smash down and uh, make a seal that way. But I could not get a good, perfect uh, seal with that. So I ended up using the Motordyne and an aftermarket gasket together. Here's the uh, Motordyne art pipes installed. Right here is the uh, Y pipe to uh, the Motordyne art pipe. And I'm going to show you how I did the O2 sensors right up here. And there's the uh, U brace right there. It bolts on perfect, almost perfectly. It was a little, had to bend it just a little bit. Here uh, is the header. Whoops, sorry. Should I can get a good view of it? There it is. Header to the Motordyne art pipe installation. Fits perfectly. I had to use the aftermarket. Uh, gasket for those because it doesn't come with them and here's the O2 sensors plugged in it plugs in nicely you can see um, we it, it runs from the bung right there and curves around you're gonna um, not need these clips right here because of the way the O2 bungs are on the art pipes it, uh, it's no longer necessary to use those so I'm going to show you a little bit more of the install here is the art pipe connection to the Y brace. It's pretty good there. I had to crank that bolt down pretty tight to get it to line up just right. And there's your O2 bung. You can see I zip tied the um, O2 sensor to that little electrical wire there to keep it sturdy up there so it doesn't hang down. And um, overall it was a pretty good install. Fit pretty nicely. I'm going to show you a little, uh, little startup here, but you really can't tell a lot of difference with the stock um, muffler until you get up to about 4,000 or 5,000 RPMs. We'll see you soon for another install. We're doing the Tomy exhaust next.